Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, we head to Salina and Crestwood Manufacturing, where the United Soybean Board, Kansas Soybean Commission, and Columbia Forest Products celebrated the use of soybeans inside the 100 million panels. We'll also have features from Kansas corn, Kansas wheat, and the Kansas Farm Bureau, and our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association and Paragon Ag Advisors. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919, kfb.org. Kansas Wheat Commission, leading in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat, online kswheat.com and Kansas Corn building the future of Kansas Corn online kscorn.com In agricultural news from agview.net the dates have been set for the first two KLA Kansas State University Ranch Management Field Days in this series High Plains Ponderosa Dairy, which is a state-of-the-art commercial milking operation, will host the first event August 13th in southwest Kansas, near Plains. Then Jarrett and Shawna Moyer, Moyer Farms LLC, will host a second field day on August the 15th. Moyer family owns and operates a stalker operation just north of Emporia. Those field days will include presentations on the history of the host operations as well as the practices that are used today and educational sessions and of course a delicious beef dinner. Sponsors for the event, Farm Credit Associations of Kansas as well as Bayer Animal Health. Well, a bipartisan group of senators has introduced legislation to address a shortage of agriculture inspectors who protect the nation's food supply and ag industries at the border. Ag inspectors work to prevent the intentional or unintentional entry of harmful plants, food and animals and goods into the U.S. The Protecting America's Food and Agriculture Act of 2019 would ensure the safe and secure trade of agricultural goods across our nation's border by authorizing the U.S. Customs and Border Protection to hire additional inspectors to fully staff America's ports of entry. Senate Ag Chairman Pat Roberts of Kansas, one of several authors of the legislation, he says that every day millions of pounds of produce, meat, and other agricultural goods enter the U.S. through our ports of entry. He said ag inspectors are responsible for ensuring that the goods move efficiently across the border while safeguarding against harmful pests, diseases, and even potential bioterrorism attacks. Find more ag news at agview.net. Stay with us. We'll have more in a moment. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web, oldieseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Grass and Grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com And Kansas Grain Sorghum. Growers working together. More at ksgrainsorghum.org Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn. For livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. What if U.S. soybean oil were an industry sensation? If end users started asking for it by name? That future is here. The time is now. 
To meet customer demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in varieties that produce oil with increased functionality. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. We're in Salina, Kansas at a big event that just took place, uh, uh, really monumental when it comes to the building industry, and it happens uh, here in Kansas and, and involves soybeans. And Jan Barnes from Columbia Forest Products is now joining us, and you came all the way from Arkansas to uh, kind of commemorate this event. Uh, tell us about uh, what the building industry is uh, doing with soybeans. Well, what we have done since 2005, because of indoor air quality, we've actually teamed with the U.S. Soybean Association and created a resin made with soybeans that will uh, be a better bonding agent and will not have any formaldehyde emissions in it. And it's cost neutral to our consumers who buy it and to our customers who buy it. So that's what we've kind of focused on is something to take formaldehyde out of the products so people in their homes don't breathe in uh, something that's dangerous to them. Okay, do you take us back to that point when you said, hey, we've got to do something different than, than that formaldehyde in our homes? Yeah, well, when I started in the business, uh, everything was made with urea formaldehyde. That's just the normal process of what everything was made with. Uh, when you'd walk through the plants, you would absolutely see people that was allergic and had, they would tear up and they had a lot of allergic reaction to the smell of the formaldehyde. And so we knew then that it wasn't a healthy uh, product to use. We got with our, resin, our current resin people and they weren't able to really give us any alternatives and that's when we reached out to the soybean because we knew they were experiencing with different things as well to, to grasp something that was better for us to use to make our product more healthy. So we've talked about cost neutral. Let's talk about uh, sustainability, life of the product, just like uh, what maybe my generation will be used to? Yeah, well, it's definitely going to be sustainable. As long as we've got good farmers in the industry like we do here in Kansas, it will be something that will be sustainable for us as far as using this same product. Uh, renewable, it's a renewable product uh, that will last a lifetime. I mean, in the Crestwood cabinets that you have, if you buy bought a set of cabinets from Crestwood, there's something that's going to last a lifetime. Okay, and again, you were here in Salina at Crestwood mm -hmm. celebrating the one, how many numbers yes. against? Unbelievable. It's 100 million panels that we have absolutely produced in, in North America. And if you laid those up, I think the totals that I had, if you laid them up end to end, you would be looking at a total of 151,000 miles of plywood that we've produced so far. Wow, well, that's great. We appreciate you, your support of uh, the soybean industry, and uh, boy, always exciting things. Look forward to see what the future holds utilizing some of these products in, in your industry. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Jan Barnes has joined us with Columbia uh, Forest Products. She's been here in Salina. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Farm Bureau a grassroots organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919, kfb.org. Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. And agview.net, covering news and views in the beef belt and western corn belt. Reliable and relevant, agview.net. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotator cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there was a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I wanted to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and take trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities, and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. 
As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash join to learn more. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow research program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Welcome back to Salina. We're at Crestwood, and where a big event took place, 100 million panels have been produced uh, around the country and uh, uh, using a, a soy-based product, uh, a resin. And uh, to talk about it from really a farmer standpoint and the, and the Kansas Soybean Checkoff standpoint, Lance Trezak, a farmer from Onega and currently serves as chair of the Kansas Soybean Commission. So Lance, talk about a day like today, celebrating uh, another new use of, uh, of soybeans that uh, not only helps you as a farmer, but, but helps every consumer that has a home. Well, this, this is really a nice success. This project started almost 20 years ago. And, uh, and the good thing about it is it, uh, they use a soy flour, and the USB worked with private individuals to, to develop this, started at Oregon State University, and they use soy flour instead of formaldehyde for the glue in plywood. So in your homes and with all the workers around and everything else, this is just a much better deal. And uh, they said they've used about 6 million acres worth of soy uh, for this product today with 100 million panels. So we're just really glad that, that the farmer checkoff dollars can help fund this. And it's just another way to help us use our soy. And those are bringing back to those Kansas soybean farmers right behind us. They go into these these Crestwood cabinets that not only are here in Kansas but all over, but they're they're made right here. And so that also has to make you feel good that that product of that investment, you know, a lot of it could stay right here in Kansas. That's right. Yeah. No, they're using our product right here in Kansas and uh, it's supporting jobs, and, and we're really really glad to see that. Well, let's talk about not only this, but other projects. Uh, uh, it seems like that uh, not only the Kansas Soybean Commission, but the United Soybean Board had really kind of upped their game, if you will, focusing on sustainable products and really sharing that story of sustainability. Well, yeah, we're always looking for, for new uses for soybeans. You know, you hate to be, we were so reliant on China, and uh, that's not working out so well now, that we need, we need these other uses anyway, and, and we've worked on them for years and years. But um, yeah, I mean, you have the oil you can do things with, you have the soy fire you can do things with. And so we're really focusing on demand and trying to find uses for our soy. All right, so again, situations like this, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it, when you go out and you pick up and see those soybeans growing, it's also good to see some of the finished product and, 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 and quite something. Who would have ever thought 20 years ago, would this work and, and, and how it's been accepted? Uh, it, it's quite an accomplishment for farmer leaders like you and other industries to, to, to partner together. It is, you know, you, you, you just can't think of all the things, the possibilities of soy are almost endless. You know, it has the oil for that and the meal. And so they can take and, and do so many things you don't even think about in it. All right, well, Lance, we appreciate it. And again, congratulations to the industry, 100 million panels of, of working with uh, these fine companies. And so uh, we look forward to hearing more of these great stories. Yeah, we hope they can whip out another 100 million. Use some it. more beans up. That's it. <laughs> Lance Rezac from Onega, who is uh, vice chair of the Kansas Soybean Commission, has joined us from Salina here at Crestwood. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. What does a brighter, more sustainable future look like in our cities and towns, and how do we get there? When New York needed an alternative fuel source to reduce carbon emissions, the city found what it needed in biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil.
I'm J.D. Hanna. I'm a producer and a board member for the Kansas Corn Growers Association. And uh, next month we have our listening tours coming up. There's uh, going to be nine stops across the state of Kansas. It provides an opportunity for producers and others in the industry to learn about the latest topics like um, ethanol and markets and trade. It's important for me to, to go to these because you know, while I'm out in the field doing the work, uh, the other side is, is that all these issues um, do affect what I do every day. So um, it also allows um, staff to engage with the producers and, and learn what their concerns are and, and maybe um, local issues that, that we're not aware of. So it allows the staff to engage with the producers and learn what the local issues are and, and other concerns they have. And, and then that will help give the, us direction on where to uh, head with the association and the commission. Another important aspect is that it allows producers to get up to date on what the association and the commission are focusing on. These uh, tour stops are free, of course. Dinner and refreshments are always served, and it allows farmers reap the benefits of their checkoff dollar. A list of these uh, events are on our website, kscorn.com backslash tour. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. The Wheat Genetics Resource Center, or WGRC, is a secret gem in the Kansas Wheat Innovation Center. The WGRC is an international wheat gene bank that stores over 700,000 seeds and 14,000 accessions. The WGRC has a climate-controlled storage environment for these seeds and greenhouse space to help plants germinate and flourish in order for research to be conducted. While a lot of their research is done in the building, another important aspect is their field plots. Recently, at the Rocky Ford Field Day, the WGRC scientists showed people the hard work they've accomplished over the past year of research. The WGRC grows wild wheat species on these plots to look for characteristics that may be valuable to Kansas wheat growers and could potentially be bred into our modern varieties in the future. One trait researchers are specifically looking for is rust resistance in these wild weeds. When scientists plant these wild weeds, they are curious to see how they adjust in the actual climate of Kansas that they cannot control. Some of the wild weeds are flourishing in the Kansas environment this year, while others are on the slow growing side with the rain that Manhattan has received. Even when varieties fail to thrive in Kansas, that data is extremely valuable to the WGRC team. The research done at the WGRC is important for everybody in the wheat industry. Other scientists use the results that they find to better the production of wheat both in Kansas and around the globe. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about employee safety and work comp coverage. On your farm, do you ask your friends to come help? Are they considered employees or neighbors helping neighbors? Did you know that you can be held responsible just as if it's a work comp accident? Give me a call, we can discuss. 
945-6733. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Kansas Farm Bureau is celebrating 100 years by going on tour across Kansas, and we want our members to join in. On Monday, July 29th, we will tour Juniper Hills Farms, a first-generation farm with more than 150 acres of USDA-certified organic land, along with 400 acres of conventional farmland in Douglas County. Then we will have lunch at Dale Banks Angus Ranch, a fifth-generation ranch in Greenwood County. After lunch, we will head to learn about an innovative Ag in the Classroom program at Bluestem Elementary in Butler County, followed by an evening meal at Eberly Farms in Sedgwick County. On Tuesday, July 30th, our day will start with a tour of Cargill's new protein headquarters in Wichita. Members can tour the Stafford County Flour Mill and Water Tech Farm in Pawnee County. Finally, on Wednesday, July 31st, we will head west to tour New Life, a sorghum processing facility in Scott County, then make our way north to see research in action at the K-State Northwest Kansas Research Center in Colby. We will end our tour with an evening meal at the Prairie Museum in Thomas County. Space is limited and members are responsible for their own transportation. Meals are $10. To register, visit www.kfb.org. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. The Kansas Department of Agriculture and K-State Department of Ag Economics conduct a biennial survey of landowners, ranchers, and livestock caretakers in the 14-county Blue Stem area. Results of the 2019 survey showed 67% of Blue Stem lease arrangements are yearly, with 11% in place more than 10 years. About 52% of Blue Stem pasture leases are written, while 48% are oral, by lease type, 21% were short summer season, 18.9% were full year, and 44% were full summer season. The average blue stem pasture lease rate reported for a 600 pound steer or heifer for the full summer season was $139.60 per head when care is provided and $116.56 per head without care. Survey results showed the average lease rate for a 600-pound steer or heifer in a short summer lease was $91.58 per head when care is provided and $75.22 without care. For a full summer season, the average price per head for a 1,250-pound cow and her calf was $257.44 with care and $177.28 without care. If care was provided, the average lease price for a 1,250-pound cow-calf pair in a full-year contract was $367.84. Without care, the full-year average price was $134.67 per pair.
Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if your cattle get out, you could be held liable for that? Call me. Let's have a discussion. 316-945-6700. Hi everyone, Zach Otot here with Paragon Ag. The ag market seemed to be range bound after we moved past the last supply and demand report. For the near term, it seems as though the trade will be watching the weather. We have seen the rain let up and the heat increase across much of the Corn Belt. This has allowed for some of those poor, saturated stands to really take off. This was shown in the USDA's crop progress report improving both corn and beans by 1% rated good to excellent. Looking more at corn, we are all anxious to see the results of the resurvey of the planted acreage report that is set to come out in August. A lot of folks seem to have discounted the last one and hope to see cuts in corn planted. For now, I think many are more focused on a cut to the average yield. From a technical perspective, this week we have been able to maintain the trend line. Without a real newsworthy headline, we very well could see the market traded in a 50 cent range between the 420 and 470 level. Beans are still looking for a demand story. With Chinese stocks getting pushed to the back burner, it is tough to think that we will get anything legitimate in place before harvest. Beans still have to make it through the heat of July and August yet before we can say that they are made. As we dried out, wheat harvest is continuing to push north. Reports of yields have actually been better than expected. Between harvest pressure and wanting to follow corn, wheat is having a tough time trying to find a story of its own. We have been hearing reports of Russia backing off expected production this summer. If these rumors materialize, U.S. wheat may become more attractive. We're heading into a volatile time frame. With the thick of the summer weather still ahead of us, the market is poised to trade at a range that may lead you to have to make a decision. If you need to sell last year's crop or think you ought to start selling this year's, but aren't sure you want to make a final decision now, let us help put a plan in place for your operation. Give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors at 888-452-8751. I'm Zach Otot. Have a great rest of your day. Well, that's our show this week. Be social with us online, KansasAgReport.net. Like us on Facebook, Kansas Ag Report Television Show. Follow us on Twitter at Kansas Ag Report. Stay safe out there. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net.